Hi guys, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland and this short video is going to discuss or try to answer the question of what is a digraph uh, of a relation. I suppose once again like all of our videos up to this particular stage uh, to draw a digraph of a relation uh, we need to have a relation in the first place uh, and like in our previous videos uh, we defined a relation on a particular set and said that the relation or a relation is simply a subset of a Cartesian product. So let's first of all uh, define a set let's say A is equal to the set that contains the elements 2 uh, 4, 7, 9 okay? and let's construct a cross A or the cross product of A with A. Uh, to construct a cross product of A with A we'll construct a table and down the first column of the table we list the elements of A 2, 4, 7 and 9 and across the first row of the table we'll also list the elements of A which are 2, 4, 7 and 9 and we proceed to construct what's known as the ordered pairs. Uh, that's where we associate each element in the first column with each element in the first row. So we associate 2 with 2, 2 with 2, 2 with 4, 2 with 7, and 2 with 9, uh, 4 with 2, 4 with 4, 4 with 7, and 4 with 9. Uh, 7 with 2, 7 with 4, 7 with 7, and 7 with 9. And then finally 9 with 2, 9 with 4, 9 with 7, and 9 with 9. And we know that the cross product of A with itself is a set, so A cross A is this set that contains all of these ordered pairs, so it contains 2, 2, 2, 4, and so on and so forth up to 9, 9. Okay, so now that we have a cross product, okay, uh, we're free to select any ordered pairs from that particular cross product and to put them into a set. So let's select a couple of ordered pairs. So let's say we're going to create a relation or 1, and let's say inside that relation we choose 2, 2. Let's say we choose 4, 7. Let's say we choose 7, 7. Let's say we choose 7, 2. And let's say we choose 9, 4. Okay. Well, this particular set is clearly a subset of the cross product, so by definition this set is a relation. Now, this particular way of representing a relation where we, we list the elements of the relation or we list the ordered pairs of relation is one particular technique for visualizing the relation. But we can also visualize the relation through what's known as a digraph or a directed graph. A directed graph. Okay? Uh, and what's important when we're constructing a directed graph of a relation, uh, well what we know is that a relation is built from a set or a relation is built on a set, and in particular the relation is taken from the cross product of the set with itself. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is we need to create a number of nodes for the elements of the set that the relation was built on. And this is very, very important. So in our case the relation was built on the set A that contains 2, 4, 7 and 9. So what we'll do is we'll create a number of nodes. That's the node 2. This is the node 4 this is the node 7 and this is the node 9. Okay, so these are all of the elements that are in the set that the relation was built on. Okay, then what we do is for each ordered pair in the relation we put in a directed edge uh, from the domain value to the range value. So the ordered pair 2, 2 is a self loop from the node 2 into itself. The ordered pair 4, 7 is a directed edge from the node 4 to the node 7. So it's a directed edge from the node 4 to the node 7. 7, 7 is a directed edge from the node 7 back to itself. So we have a directed edge from 7 to itself. 7, 2 
is a directed edge from the node 7 to the node 2. And 9.4 is a directed edge from the node 9 to the, no to the node 4. So we put in a directed edge from the node 9 to the node 4. And this particular structure here is what's known as a directed graph or a digraph for a relation. And digraphs are very, very good structures yeah, uh, for identifying certain properties of relations. For example, we might want to identify whether the relation is reflexive, symmetric, transitive or whether it's an equivalence relation uh, and in a in a f in a, f a video to follow uh, we will consider digraphs and we'll show what reflexive symmetric and transitive digraphs look like but for this particular video uh, all we're concerned uh, with is okay we've been given a relation and we want to we want to chart or we want to plot its digraph so let's consider another relation on the set a okay and let's say that the relation that we're dealing with, okay, well, let's say that, let's call this R, R2, and let's say that that contains, okay, well, we were free to choose any ordered pairs. So let's say it contains 4, 4, okay, let's say it contains 4, 7, let's say it contains 7, 4, and let's say it contains 9, 7, as an example okay and what we want to do is we want to construct the digraph of this relation where this relation is has been built on the set a in other words the relations ordered pairs have been chosen from the cross product of a with itself so once again to construct a digraph a directed graph a directed graph or digraph okay to construct a digraph, the first thing we need to do, and the most important thing, is to make sure we go back to the set that the relation was built on. In this case, the relation was built on the set that A that contained the elements 2, 4, 7, and 9. So we create nodes for each of them elements. So we have the node for 2, we have the node for 4, we have the node for 7, and we have the node for 9. So there are all the elements in the set A. And then what we do is for each ordered pair, we map the domain value to the range value using a directed edge. So the first ordered pair is 4, 4. And this tells us that 4 is associated with 4, or 4 is mapped to 4. So we have a directed edge from 4 to 4. Then we have 4, 7. So we have a directed edge from 4 to 7. Then we have 7, 4, a directed edge from 7 to 4 and then we have 9 7 a directed edge from 9 9 to 7 okay so this is an unusual graph compared to the one that we had previously the one that we had previously for relation or one we could see that each element in the set that the relation was built on okay 2 4 7 and 9 that each node that represents these elements it had some sort of edge connecting to other nodes. And this example here shows us an example of where we can have a relation, okay, a subset of the cross product uh, of A with itself, where we have a node that doesn't have any connections to any other node. And that is perfectly valid. It's important when we're drawing these directed graphs that we include in the graph all the nodes that can be found in the set that the relation has been built on. And 2 was an element of that set, so it's important to have 2 here as a node, uh, albeit that node is not connected to any other nodes. Uh, as I said, the next set of videos are going to look at the construction, the construction of digraphs, the construction of digraphs, digraphs, okay? Uh, for relations that are reflexive, reflexive, symmetric, symmetric, and transitive. Okay? And when a relation is all three, we say that the relation is an equivalence, an equivalence relation. 
So at the end of this video, there will be a link to this particular video that's going to plot digraphs for relations that are reflexive, symmetric, transitive, and it's going to show you what them graphs look like. As I said earlier, digraphs are a great way to examine whether a relation is reflexive, symmetric, or transitive. Okay guys, uh, my name is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service uh, and I hope this video uh, was informative. Okay, thank you.